The basic back handspring on the beam can be initiated with the feet together or with the toes of one foot just a little in front of the other. The arms begin up by the ears and swing straight to start the skill. If the back handspring is going to finish in a lunge, the legs begin to split during the flying phase, not before both feet have left the beam together. The goal is to show the legs opening wide while passing through the vertical and coming down to a lunge. The hand placement for the back handspring is with one hand in front of the other, but very close in between them. The exact hand positions on the beam are discussed in following movies of the back handspring, with close-ups of the gymnast performing this very important skill. Notice how this taller gymnast starts with her left foot slightly in front. Her foot in front is the same as the one in front during the final lunge. Arms straight up by the ears, legs slightly bent and the trunk leaning forward to maximize jumping power during the arm swing. Feet leaving the beam together, legs correctly opening before the vertical and one hand in front of the other but very close to each other. Observe once more the fair back handspring example. After video close-ups of the back handspring hands placement of several gymnasts, it seems that one of the most common ways to place the hands on the beam is to position the back hand with the fingers grabbing the edge of the beam and the front hand turned slightly inwards and very close to the back hand. Some coaches prefer the front hand slightly turned out, grabbing the opposite edge of the beam than the back hand, but during several video sessions we only witnessed one gymnast using that technical approach. Placing the hands almost side by side is a dangerous approach that must be avoided because of its slipping off potential. The hands should not be apart from each other, but in fair close contact. Take a final look at one elite gymnast hands placement in slow motion and then at her real speed. To assist with the back handspring on the beam, the coach uses the same spotting techniques as he would use on the floor, but he emphasizes a firm hold on the abdominal and lower back areas to control and help the gymnast during her hands placement on the beam and when coming down to her feet. Spotting on the gymnast's left side, the coach places his right hand on the gymnast's lower back before the skill begins, waiting to place his left hand on the near hamstring after the athlete swings her arms. Once the gymnast begins, he spots the initiation of the flying face with his hands quickly moving to the abdominal area and the lower back to spot the rest of the skill. He then resets them to prevent over-rotation or any other landing problem. Take a look at the back handspring spotting from a front point of view. Now observe the skill from a dorsal point of view. And finally watch one more time a side view of the backhand spring spotted on a low beam. The backhand spring learning progression follows the general beam skill learning progression. The gymnast begins by training on a floor line and once they can perform the skill there with a fair degree of consistency, they can start training the skill on a low beam with folded mats at beam level and even with some padding on top of the beam. As they improve their mastery and are performing the skill well without extra folded mats on the low beam, their next step is to start working it on a medium beam with soft elevated mats under the beam, eventually reduced until the skill can finally be safely performed on the competition height beam over regular competition mats. Notice how these young gymnasts work to improve their back handspring techniques while they continue working to improve their basic posture and presentation focusing on learning how to start and finish the skills with the stomach in, arms by the ears, and elegant lunges.